Another way to determine if a relation is a function, especially if you're given a graph, is the vertical line test. Using the vertical line test on a graph of a function or of a relation is another way to determine if the relation is a function. If the vertical line passes through at least two points on a graph, then it is not a function. This implies one element of the domain is paired with more than one element of the range. Here we have an example and it says use the vertical line test to determine whether each graph is a function. Well, we only have one graph right now. Here's my vertical line and as we run it across the graph of the red function, you can see that they only ever intersect at one point. That means right here, one x value, one y value. If we move that over a little bit more, and see and continue to move it, there is never a place where it touches the red graph in more than one spot. Now, if we got crazy here, and we took this graph, and we turned it on its side, and took a vertical line and put it on there, we can see that even where I stop it now, that this vertical line crosses the x-axis, or the graph, in three different places, which means this one x value has three y values, one, two, three. So if one x value is paired with more than one y value, the relation is not a function. Therefore, if we turn the graph like this, it is not a function. If we take the graph and we turn it back to the way it was, it is a function. Function notation is just a fancy way of working with y and equations. We see we have two equations here, y is equal to 2x minus 9, and that is the same as f of x is equal to 2x minus 9. It's just read differently. f of x is read, quote unquote, f of x, or a function f of x. It does not mean f times x. What we're being asked to do here is find f of 2 for each function. I'll show you how to do that. f of x is equal to the opposite of x squared plus 1. So we write down f of 2. Now watch, we replace the x with 2. So everywhere on this side we need to replace the x with 2. So we're going to have the opposite of 2 squared plus 1. Well, the opposite of 2 squared is negative 4 plus 1 and negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Similar situation for part B. f of 2 is going to be equal to the absolute value of 3 times 2. Well, 3 times 2 is 6, so that gives us the absolute value of 6. And the absolute value of 6 is 6. So f of 2, when f of x is the absolute value of 3x, is 6. And this really boils down to simplifying, substituting and simplifying expressions. f of 2 when f of x is equal to 9 divided by the quantity 1 minus x becomes 9 divided by 1 minus 2. Simplify the denominator, 9 over negative 1, which is equal to negative 9. I hope this video lesson has helped you today. If it has, please take the time to leave a comment or rate the video.